Ball there. I'm sorry from 17 once again. This is my Metal Gear Rising S rank walkthrough. This is the first mission, coup d'etat. And this is the first fight with the Mastiff that joins you on Revengeance mode. He's also there on Very Hard mode, but Very Hard mode is a complete and utter joke compared to this difficulty. But what I do on that first fight, I get the parry on the first enemies and then take out the Mastiff like a mouse. Now this is the second ranked fight. The fights in between these do not count towards the ranking, so don't worry about them at all. This fight here, immediately if you're lucky, the Gecko will charge you like he did me, and if you've got a full blade time bar, you can do the, the awesome riposte when you block him. A couple of things to bear in mind. A lot of the time on this game, you're going to be at the mercy of the AI. If the AI does not do what you want it to do, it can be difficult, especially when you're up against groups of Fenrirs and Raptors. Sometimes the AI just fucks you, it's just how it works. But as soon as you've killed those, you'll get two of the armoured cyborgs. I use the pincer on them because it breaks their armour extremely well. I have discovered the, the armour breaking sword, and I've not used it before I started this guide, and now it's probably my favourite sword, because it's amazing guys. It's, I'm actually going to make a video on how good this sword is, because it's overlooked. And it's overlooked because the fox blade is so good. And even the, the, the Murasama sword, or Muramasa, I always get it wrong. I'm, you know, there's so many different fucking Mura somethings in the Japanese names, but it's unbelievably good against those cy armored cyborgs, which are a giant pain in the ass. You can literally cut them once, and if you're lucky and you get the special effect off the blade, it will immediately let you do a Zandatsu against them, and it works on a lot of the heavier enemies. So it's just such a good support weapon because a little bit of luck, and you know. You can destroy a room full of enemies that the Sam Sword just will not do it with the same kind of, you know, fidelity. It's such a cool weapon and it's so, so useful. And like I say, I will be covering it in a video to to increase the, just the awareness of it. Because nobody's using that sword and they need to be because it's so good on certain enemies. And it's a very situational sword but at the same time it's more than competent at doing standard soldiers because the standard soldiers are cream puffs. A second thing I found out as well, a grenade that I would have never used, the, the red phosphorus grenades. I thought they were just, you know, to stop cameras or something like that, you know, like a shaft grenade. I didn't really use them, didn't really experiment with them, but essentially when you throw them, it deagros everything around you and it goes as if they haven't spotted you. And this can work on Mastiffs, on Cyclopses, this can work on pretty much any enemy that you're not that comfortable with fighting because it will disengage them from actively engaging you and it will enable you to divide and conquer them. And a couple of the fights on this game that I think are a little unfair because you fight a bunch of enemies and then they spawn something actually lethal. And on those encounters, as soon as you finish off all the easy guys before the tough guys turn up, throw a red phosphorus down and then beat them up. It's so useful guys, I, I, I'm going to do a video on that as well because it stunned me on how great it was. It helped me on the elevator, it helped me in the oriental garden, it, it would have helped me in the lobby with the, the four Fenrirs but I managed to get a really nice run against those. Speaking of, uh, this is the, the boss fight. Once you know what you're doing on this boss and you get good at charging the pincer for when he lands, you can do it really quickly. If you time a parry against this boss, it will do ridiculous damage with this sword. So, either way, you can get rid of him at your own leisure, in the style that you enjoy. And when you get the no damage bonus, everything else follows suit. But this is the chopper fight. This can be a, a really fiddly one. Whenever you're fighting the helicopter, sometimes if they shoot you... You know, it ruins the run, you have to restart, but if you're using the Psy, the Dystopia, against them, this weapon is ridiculous, and the best thing about it is, is it charges a stun attack, and it turns purple when it's going to be able to stun people, and it takes, I think, about five to six seconds for that stun to, to recharge, and if you, as long as you keep it equipped, it will recharge. If you get hit, apparently, I think it cancels the timer and it restarts, but this weapon... If you have to take on one big enemy or, you know, a couple of enemies that you can easily kill and one enemy that's really pissing you off, you can use the, the Psy to stun the enemy you don't like and kill him or leave him and kill the ones that you're cool with. It's good for flying enemies, although the, the lock-on and the camera on this game really, really show that they're not that competent when you're taking on things in the air. And there's one thing that I just wish the game did, 
and it would fix all my problems that I have with the lock-on situation. It's, it's all about the priority scheme. When something's in the air, if I jump, prioritize the flying thing. Like, if I jump and attack with the Psy, if I'm in mid-air, it should go for the thing that's in mid-air with me. It shouldn't go for the guy on the ground. And it really fucks me off. And I know if you use the lock-on, this can alleviate these problems, but even getting the lock-on sometimes in a game that's this fast can really, really catch you can catch you wanting and you can take hits, you can take sloppy damage and it's really frustrating. But these armoured cyborg guys, if you slide towards them in bullet time, I say bullet time, it's uh, blade mode, sorry, they will attempt to block you and if you slash their sword with your sword, it will do the stun that I've done to that guy over there. Uh, it's a very useful technique for fighting them if you don't want to use the pincers or use any kind of heavy attack or the psi. As I've mentioned, if I was using the armor breaker, I could just swing at this guy all I wanted and it would break his armor, because that sword, I can't even describe it. Experiment with both the stun sword and the armor breaker sword, because both of them have different results against different enemies and you never know, it may be the edge that you need that's you know stopping you from getting that S rank or stopping you from beating that, that encounter. But once you've got him on the ground, you want to just keep stunning him with the pincer, you can kind of cancel out of the recovery frames on the secondary weapons using blade mode, using the, the evasive slash, using just the standard slash, but sometimes it still takes a little bit too long for my liking. But this next fight here guys, this is a missable fight. If you do not get spotted, it does not spawn the backup and you will not get the S rank. You have to do this. This is one of the toughest fights of the level. Once you kill this gecko and you kill the, the soldier to your right, there's going to be another soldier that turns up in a grad. And grads are not that bad. They're really not. They're not the worst enemy on the game. The problem with them is if you if you don't get the parry, it can turn it into quite a long fight. And it's so easy to make a mistake because there's people shooting you. I just paused it then for some random reason. <laughs> There's, there's so many variables, like those really stupid slow moving missiles that he fires that chase you. Like that one that's chasing me right now, but luckily enough I land the parry and then we can get rid of this guy. And a little tip as well here folks, when you're running towards the door after this, go immediately through it. Do not go to those enemies that you spawn, those, those three dudes at the side where there's one of the ID arms. I went to those guys and I ended up getting hit and when I restarted the checkpoint I had to do that fight again. God, it pissed me off. So just run straight to the door, completely ignore the, the dots on your map. And it just kind of makes you want a manual save. But if you go back into that area, this is the secret fight against two of the helicopters. I'm going to say this right now, folks. This fight is pure luck. If you get the choppers in a certain position, one of them just will not shoot you, and you can kill the first one and then kill the second one, and it's easy. If you don't, the other one's going to shoot you all the time, the one's going to fire missiles, it's going to hit the chopper you're attacking, and that's going to damage you. This is bullshit. I don't like this fight. The size make it very simple, and if you get a good run like this, everyone's going to watch this thinking, oh, this is easy, this is simple, it looks, it looks like it's nothing. But when you do it yourself, it can be a giant pain in the dick. So you want to... Just be willing to, to, to restart a few times because it's never going to be that smooth the first time every time. But this is the next ranked fight and because it's going to be these grabby guys, I always put on the the pole arm for them, the strangler or whatever the, the French word is, le, le astranger or something. And what will happen is two guys are going to spawn. So uh, I'm using the, the pole arm to build my combo, to keep me safe from the guys grabbing me. And as soon as you can get the Zandatsu opportunity, grab it, because it's going to help you on the grading. Other guys turned up just then, use the pole to stun him, get the Zandatsu. I think I fucked that one up big time. I did indeed. And then just finish off these guys. As long as you get the no damage, your combo's going to be high enough, the time's going to be fine, battle points should be fine. There you go. 500 points away from being perfect. One more Zandatsu, and I think that was the perfect score. But this is the Mistral fight. I get grabbed at the beginning, which is always annoying, especially when she's stunned, but now I've destroyed her pole arm, I could wait for her to try and throw the little guys back at me and then just get the perfect parry on them, because it is the quickest way to kill this woman, but uh, the technique of charging the pincer for when she lands, it is so effective at skipping phases of this fight, it's... I can't even describe how easy this boss is 
when you've got all, all this equipment and when you've played the game a while. I got to her on Revenge mode from a new game and she beat me up so hard, guys. It, it wasn't even funny, especially the second phase. The second phase is just really tricky. And I'm going to go back and get some vengeance for that. Because I'm going to do a, a new game Revenge mode playthrough. I'm not going to record it though, I might stream it. But this is the second phase. This is definitely the most awkward one, just because you get pincered by the handy dudes and... It's just not cool. But there was the, the counter, or the, the the blade mode time to break the pole arm. That's me using the stinger to, to cross some distance. This is where we, we need to put some damage on us so we can skip the phase of this fight. I completely ignore the little things, I just use them as collateral. If you focus on the little guys, you're going to have a rough time on this, believe you me. Every time she goes up here, it's the same thing. Stand under her, charge the hit on the pincer, and then release it as she lands. But be, be warned, she will almost always hit you. Watch this. Immediately she goes for an attack after you've finished. So get ready to counter, and you should be okay. But now that that's done, this is the third phase, where she starts getting all whippy. The key to, to killing this boss quickly is not giving her enough space to do the stupid cartwheel move that she spams that does a lot of damage. Well, here she comes, the final form. So, I'm going to charge the pincer to get rid of all the little guys and try and get some quick damage on her. Look at that, man. She even had the pole arm and it did, what was that, 20% damage? People really need to use this weapon more. If you want quick damage, nothing nothing performs like the pincers, like the bloodlust. I just wish it had more moves because it's such a cool weapon. But there is the stun, there is the, the breaking of the pole arm and this might be finishing the boss. We'll soon find out. She's going to throw something at me? She's going to try. Right then, I, I kind of wanted the parry but I was too too far away. Do I get it here? No, I don't. But she runs away, charge the pincer once again and this is going to go immediately to the quick time event I believe. And then we'll see if we've got the grade and the overall ranking. So, this is when damage is kind of pointless. You notice just then she didn't attack, even though she should have been going for this moment. And the camera completely fucks me here. You can't see a damn thing. Watch this. Oh, actually, it might be a, a different run. Yeah, I think it was a different run. Well, I've had a, quite a lot of a glitchy cameras on this game. The camera is your biggest enemy. It is easily the most overpowered aspect of this game. But I'm slashing here to try and get my hits up, but you can never really get more than 15 on her, so there's no real point. Maybe using the machete might, might get it up, because it's a very fast weapon. But there is the S rank, and then we should be seeing the final statistic page. So, if done correctly, you didn't miss any fights, and you got S's on all of them, you will get an overall rank of S. If you get anything lower than an S on one of them, you will still fail. You need them all to be S. It's pretty brutal, but I've got faith that you can do it. So thank you for watching, and you take care now.